Assalamu alaikum ji, uh, this is Shafat Hashmi. Thank you very much, uh, Mia Shahid Saab, to invite me once again um, and speak about the current economic impact of uh, the current pandemic. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty challenging as to what's going on. And I strongly believe that lockdown and social distancing is definitely the right measures that we should take. Uh, because yes, we have to flatten the curve. But uh, at the same time, um, there are a lot of other uh, factors which needs to be considered. Um, specifically when it comes to small medium enterprises and the daily wages and a lot of other industries apart from the regular industries that we talk about. Now let's take a look as to what has happened in the last few months. Uh, last year in 2019 and early 2020 uh, we saw that a lot of top CEOs, including Bill Gates and a few others, have actually resigned from their positions. So what has happened is that pre-pandemic, the valuation of those companies, let's assume, was a billion dollars, and you own 20% shares, which is $200 million. Um, current valuation of the company during pandemic obviously goes down by, let's say, 50% and the valuation of the assets also go down by 50%. So your share values go down from 200 million to 100 million dollars. And it is very difficult to liquidate at the same time. So therefore, these people were smart and somehow they knew what was coming up and they had some kind of information. There's a lot of conspiracy theories which are going around. And you would see that there was a movie known as The Pandemic and uh, Contagion, I believe. And uh, there have been some prophecies which have been published uh, a few years ago. Uh, we also see that there's a lot of other stuff which has been shared here and there in some Korean um, TV series and so on and so forth. But was this really a conspiracy? Is this really a biological weapon? And if so, uh, which era are we living? And what's the future? Now, let's take a step back and understand what was SARS, and then what was MERS, and what was Ebola, and then where comes, you know, COVID-19. Now, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not really here to comment, but I do understand that somehow the virus has been mutated. Uh, we also hear stories that uh, someone in U.S., a doctor or a senior professor, has been charged uh, that Chinese have been funding them for creating this virus. Now, frankly speaking, whatever the case is, it's there. Whether somebody created it, whether it's a biological weapon, whether it's not a biological weapon, whatever it is, I think it's out there. Uh, we all have different viewpoints and we really do not have any evidence by far to say whether it is a biological weapon or this is not a biological weapon. But yes, we can definitely understand that who is the beneficiary. Uh, the beneficiary, I believe, is definitely going to be uh, the U.S. dollars as a currency because as soon as every second country which sort of goes down into a, an economic and a financial uh, turmoil because of a lockdown, uh, they all end up reaching out to IMF and IMF is going to give them money, so which means the demand for U.S. dollars is going to go up and at the same time, because your country is not doing too well, economically, so IMF is going to charge you a much higher interest rate to cover up their risks. Now, frankly speaking, since 2008 until 2020, the last 12 years, uh, is there anybody who can really tell me that if one single year we have seen which was all blossoming and which was all great and which was all doing awesome? Uh, frankly speaking, none of, those, uh, none of these years were actually as good as they were. I mean, we came up with different waves, you know, uh, early 60s, 70s, we had an industrial revolution, a lot of people were investing money in industries, agriculture was doing great, and then later on, you know, the computer and the IT came up, a lot of people made money from the computer and IT industry. Later on, you know, the mobile industry came up, the banking industry suddenly flourished, um, and then furthermore, we see that the financial systems became more and more you know, um, uh, they, they increased their penetration into the market. And then we also saw that a lot of investment went into real estate. So a lot of oil cities came up between 2000 until 2007 or 2008. Now all those oil cities, as you know, like Dubai, Qatar, and Kuwait, and uh, even Saudi, uh, you know, these all these cities, they came up. 
and uh, while this whole thing was happening somewhere in between you know there were stuff going on in the Middle East especially which was essentially an oil war uh, to stabilize because we have to stabilize dollar because essentially it's a petrodollar now when we look at the petrodollar what I see is that this is a global reset it's an economic global reset which we are experiencing right now uh, the dollar might not be pegged with petrol anymore uh, it's not going to be based on oil. I think the future is about digital health care. Uh, furthermore, I also think that since 5G is coming, so there's an impact of 5G. And when we look at 5G, uh, obviously there are people and there are investors who have invested into this race of 5G. And once we look into this race, we also understand that somehow the, the big boys, they wanted that more and more people get access to uh, the digital world and most of the businesses they should also move to digital and furthermore I think frankly we are just going through uh, a pre-planned social experiment people are trying to understand how is it that humans will behave if they have been in lockdown for 15-20 days now honestly speaking it's more like a war scenario uh, for example God forbid if there was a war uh, we'll still be in a lockdown in a much worse situation I mean there would be no electricity for sure um, there will be shortage of food, there will be shortage of medicines, and there will be a lot more going on. There will be much more harassment going on as well, and armies would be fighting. Uh, so what we are currently going through is pretty much a, a warlike situation. And if some people and some brothers and sisters of our nation and other nations do not believe so, I think you're seriously wrong. We are in the middle of a war, and it's a warlike scenario. Um, the economic impact is going to go further. Now, let's talk about the industries and the overall economic impact. We all know airlines have, you know, have been grounded. Majority of them, hospitality industry, travel industry, tourism industry has taken a very bad hit. Um, so much so that our religious and holy sites and those congregations have all been cancelled. So, uh, you know, retail sector, restaurants, cafes, fashion industry and a lot of other industries have taken a very bad hit. What are the industries which haven't taken a hit? Uh, okay, soap manufacturers, uh, sanitizing companies, hospitals, um, you know, diagnostic centers, healthcare in general, um, digital companies like Facebook and YouTube and Netflix, these are the companies whose share prices have actually gone up because the users have increased. E-academies and e-schooling, the shares have gone up, the economy has gone better in those sectors. So what's really happening? I think if there is any businessman who does not embrace the change of digital today is going to lose out big time in the future. Uh, it's not about regular manufacturing. What we will see that people are not bringing labor into their factories. Why? Because they, are in, they might be infectious. So therefore, what's the future? Robotics. Uh, in different factories, people are going to use robots going forward. And a lot of factories have actually moved to that. So a lot of these jobs will no more be there. Mm, service industries, okay, they still are better off because they can still work from home and they could do a lot of this stuff from home, but uh, manufacturing, agriculture, um, retail, and all that which requires a physical presence, such businesses have taken a tremendous hit. And, uh, you know, a typical samosa wala or a daibale wala, you know, he needs to be online to sell his stuff. And if he's not online, he's definitely losing out. Future, uh, I believe, is that uh, bad economy, poor people, and when someone is starving, when someone doesn't have the basic facilities, uh, they would the, 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 the crime rate will definitely increase. And once the crime rate increases, people and citizens who are vulnerable, uh, they can be misused by all kinds of agencies and all kinds of people. Uh, they can be paid uh, to do anything. And this is something which I believe the government must look into and all of the government should also look into. Uh, vulnerable people, they become a hazard to the society. And uh, because you're sitting alone and you have nothing much to do, so a lot of negative thoughts also come. Uh, not everybody thinks straight and positive, but people also look for shortcuts and you think more and more about shortcuts. So I think there is an obligation on our 
uh, trainers, coaches, motivational speakers, celebrities, you know, politicians, business community to actually guide, uh, you know, our nation and be a mentor to the local communities. This is extremely important. And I would uh, like to call out our religious leaders as well from all sects and all religions to, to unite on this cause. Um, to pray uh, because I personally think that humanity has done something really terrible to, to experience this and this is not the first time it has happened a hundred years ago it has happened a hundred years earlier and it's, it's on a repeat and every time uh, people die but uh, the world has waged more and more wars the world has uh, focused on an ammunition race and an economic race but they have definitely not focused on healthcare and they're definitely not focused on how to deal with such pandemics. They have definitely not focused on um, research. I think we need to step up our game. Uh, we need to be smart. We need to think a little bit higher, a little bit better. And uh, it's high time that while we are together with our families, we should uh, ponder and reflect as to what is the purpose that the life has been blessed to us. Um, our hearts go out and our feelings, our love, our prayers go out to all those who have passed away in different parts of the world due to this pandemic. Uh, my help and my prayers also go out to those who are suffering and I really pray that they all recover. And I honestly pray that may Allah keeps all of you safe and sound and maybe get through this very, very soon, inshallah. Uh, God willing, I think it is time that we should repent, uh, we should self-reflect and we have done something really wrong which we should think about. Uh, people post COVID-19, um, humans post COVID-19, um, I believe we must change because if we don't uh, then we should also expect something more critical, something even more worse that may come. So it's time to reflect, time to sit back. I thank you all for being there. Um, uh, and thank you, um, Asian Lifestyle TV, uh, for inviting me over. Jazakallah khair.